Hey, this is Raven with Talon Survival. Join us today as we explain CTCSS and DCS tones as part of our Ham Radio for Beginners quick series. Today we're going to dig into our Ham Radio for Beginners quick series and talk a little bit about CTCSS and DCS tones. Both CTCSS tones and DCS tones are a type, two different types of tone-coded squelch. The sole purpose, well, the primary purpose for using tone-coded squelch is to be able to filter out unwanted transmissions. This could be utilizing your radio where you only want to hear traffic from a specific group of people, uh, say uh, parties that are within your group or your team, Uh, or it could be uh, for activating a repeater. Uh, The large majority of repeaters in the amateur radio world require a tone uh, to be transmitted from your radio in order to activate the repeater, therefore repeating your transmission. In urban areas, or uh, even rural areas where you have um, repeaters that could potentially overlap and are on similar frequencies, uh, this will allow you to focus on, tones can allow you to focus on a single repeater. So it'll alleviate unwanted uh, transmissions or interference uh, that are from surrounding repeaters that you don't want to listen to when you're trying to listen to traffic from just a single repeater. So, I had mentioned before, there's two types, CTCSS and DCS. Both of these are used in analog radio communications. We'll talk about digital radio communications very lightly a little bit later. But DCS and CTCSS, when you hear those terms, are talking about analog radio communications. So, what does CTCS stand for? We've been talking about it for a few minutes already. CTCSS stands for tone, excuse me, stands for Continuous Tone Coded Squelch System. What it does in a nutshell is it adds a low frequency tone, which is a subaudible tone, meaning it's below the hearing range. So when you uh, transmit uh, your audio, this tone is included, but it's not heard by the human ear. There are 42 different tones as a standard. Uh, You will find some radios have more, some radios have less, but in general, uh, the interoperability standard is 42 different tones. Uh, You may also see CTCSS tones called PL tones, or private line tones, privacy tones, or sometimes privacy codes. So the next is digital coded squelch or DCS. Digital coded squelch is essentially a newer version or an upgraded version from CTCSS. And what it does is it adds a repeating digital data code stream onto a single subaudible tone. And again, subaudible meaning it's below the hearing range. DCS adds a number of different features. One, it gives you more codes to choose from. While you may see up to 512 codes on your radio, uh, essentially there's only 83 unique codes as a standard. And uh, I'll stay out of the weeds on that because that's a much longer conversation. You may also see DCS tones called DPL tones or also just DCS tones. I had mentioned the additional features before, so not only does it give you additional codes, um, you know, 83 codes as opposed to 42 um, to give you more variety, but it also can allow additional features such as the quieting of the squelch tail. So that that sound you hear uh, whenever on your radio when someone stops transmitting, uh, that kind of very brief static tone, it can, using, when you're using DCS, and you're using this feature, it can actually alleviate that squelch tail tone that's used uh, commonly in uh, the commercial sector. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how tones are actually used. 
the most important when you're using uh, the tone coded squelch in most cases is going to be the transmit tone. So when you add a um, tone into your radio on the transmit side, what you see is it send or what it does is it sends the tone when you press the PTT button or the push to talk button on the radio when you start transmitting. When you transmit, you are sending a tone. And again, one of the main reasons why that's important is uh, radios that are listening for that tone or repeaters that are listening for that tone will hear that tone and it allows them to uh, activate the speaker so you're heard or activate the repeater so your transmission is repeated. Now, the other side is the receive side. And this is where your radio is listening for tones that are sent by other radios that are transmitting. And this includes repeaters. So if you're trying to single out listening on a, on a, uh, to a single repeater on a given frequency, you'll listen to for the receive tone that's programmed on the transmit side of that repeater. So the receive side is when your radio is listening for a tone transmitted by another radio. And when it hears the tone that it's listening for, it will open up the speaker so that you hear the transmission. So again, just to recap, the transmit tone is what's programmed in your radio so that you send the tone whenever you're transmitting so that you're heard by others listening for that tone. The receive side, uh, when you have a tone programmed on the receive side of your radio, that mutes your speaker until uh, the radio, your radio receives a signal from somebody else that is transmitting that tone on the given channel or frequency. So let's look at an extremely basic example of how this works in programming. Uh, if we look at a couple of call frequencies here uh, that are in, programmed in simplex, uh, if you look here, the CTCSS tone has a transmit and a receive setting. And you can see those as they're denoted by the arrows. Under the tone mode, you'll see how these are done, how these are shown separately. So let's look at row, um, let's look at row one here for VHF call A. The tone mode selected is tone. That means we're only transmitting, this is in chirp, and that means we're only transmitting a tone. So this transmit tone is gonna be 88.5 hertz. Now, if I were to program a channel and I want to transmit and receive a tone, so say for example row two here, UHF call uh, A, we're gonna select the T squelch or TSQL tone mode. And what that does is that's what Chirp calls having the tone for both transmit and receive. The way it shows in the system is only under receive, but it will actually work for both. Uh, it is actually uh, both transmitting and listening for that 88.5 hertz tone. Now, let's look at a DCS tone, for example. Uh, again, we'll use, we'll use row three here, UHF call B, but we're programming it for a digital tone. So our DCS tone, and we're using DCS 023. So code 23. And as you can see, this code 23 is utilized for both transmit and receive. There are other options uh, on certain radio models where you can use just a DCS code for transmit or just on receive, but the most common use is where you're going to have DCS on both sides uh, with one setting. So again, uh, in one place, it's entered one place and you're going to have it on both transmit and receive. So when we get out of analog radio and we get into digital radio, uh, we're dealing with equivalencies. So uh, I'll give you a couple examples here, and we're not going to get into the weeds. Uh, this is a much broader conversation. But if we're dealing with DMR, uh, the DMR digital standard, which is very common in, in ham radio, uh, the equivalent, the digital equivalent in DMR to uh, DCS or CTCSS and what and what tone coded squelch does is going to be the color code. And in DMR, there's 16 different color codes. 
Uh, what this actually does is it's uh, it adds a digital identifier inside the TDMA data stream. That's the TDMA is the modulation type that's used for DMR. Um, so that's how that's your digital equivalency to um, a tone coded squelch when we're using DMR. If we were to use P25, uh, the the NAC or the network access code would be um, your equivalency. So there's uh, 4,096 different NAT codes that can be used, and for P25, that NAT code is embedded in the actual is actually embedded in the P25 data header. So, again, we're going to stop there. We're not going to get too much into the weeds, but the big takeaway is understand when we're dealing with uh, tone coded squelch, um, we're talking analog. Uh, we do have some equivalencies in digital radio that do the same thing, but technologically they're different. So, couple important points to take away. CTCSS and DCS do not create privacy. Anyone can still hear your transmission on a scanner or a radio um, that, uh, that is capable of hearing the frequency you're on. All it does is stop who you hear. CTCSS and DCS stops who you hear to alleviate unwanted transmission, hearing unwanted transmissions. But when you're transmitting, you're still transmitting in the clear, and anyone can hear, can hear your transmission. Next item is CTCS and DS, DCS are analog. When we're dealing with those, the, those uh, DCS and CTCSS, we're talking about analog communications, not digital. Again, digital radio has equivalents, but they're technologically different. When we're working in the ham bands, we're mostly using CTCSS tones. Most repeaters are going to use CTCSS as opposed to using DCS. There's a few out there that use DCS, but we're still pretty heavily involved with CTCSS. Uh, and then last, uh, I think this probably goes without saying, but just to clarify, you cannot use CTCSS and DCS at the same time. You have to select one or the other. Uh, and if you go back and look at our programming, our simple programming example, uh, you can kind of see that. But you can't select both. You must select one or the other. Do you have other questions about ham radio? If so, let us know in the comments below. If you'd like to learn more about amateur radio communications, check out our website at talonsurvival.com. If you're looking for amateur radio gear and you'd like to see what radios we recommend and use, check out our links below. Using those links also helps us bring you more great content.